All right. So today I want to talk a little bit about Calcite and Calcite components. So I want to cover on how you can uh, leverage using Calcite components in your applications using the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. So let's get to it. Okay, so first off, you want to look at the uh, main page for Calcite, which is on developersarcgis.com. Uh, you'll have the page for the Calcite design system. That's going to have a lot of information for you. It's got information about the components, the icon library, the UI kit. There's a really great tutorial in here on creating a mapping app that you can walk through. And this is going to be like the best place you can go to to uh, learn how to get started, to use Calcite, to create mapping applications with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. It's a really great resource. I highly recommend it. You can also look at the documentation for framework integrations. So if you want to uh, use the Calcite components in a TypeScript application, if you want to use them inside a Webpack, uh, there's uh, some other information you can look at on the, uh, the GitHub page uh, to find out more. But what I want to talk about is something like uh, this sample here, right? So this is a really cool sample where I can go ahead, I can hover over the map, uh, I select uh, features via hit test, and then I populate the uh, feature widget over on this side here with the feature that I'm hovering over, right? So it's cool. It's kind of it's kind of neat. However, kind of what I want to do is I kind of want to mimic the behavior of a pop-up, right? So if I have all the features or more than no, more than one feature in any application, maybe all the features on the screen, and I just want to scroll through them here. I want a little button uh, like the pop-up has, which isn't going to be on this page. But if I go to any uh, pop-up sample here, for example. Let's look at this one real quick. Uh, I kind of want to mimic what a pop-up looks like, where I click on the pop-up and I've got the ability to go ahead and navigate uh, amongst the features that are in that pop-up, right? And maybe even zoom the features too. So let's see how we might be able to do that using the Calcite components to build this little wrapper for us. So I've kind of got the skeleton for this built here. Uh, if we look at the HTML for this, right? I'm basically going to be using a Calcite card. I could use a panel, but I'll just use a card here. And I'm going to have a, an element, which is going to be where the feature widget is going to go. And I've got a button here. Uh, this could be my first button. This could be used for zooming. So I put in the slot for footer leading, which is going to put it uh, over on this side over here. And it's going to have an icon start of the uh, magnifying uh, glass plus. So that's going to be that, that little button there. Uh, I've got this little um, span here that's just going to be for the count. Uh, let's go ahead and format this HTML a little bit better here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've got another slot here. And slots are how you can manage um, uh, children of web components, maybe where you want them to go, right? So I've got this footer trailing. So I had the uh, footer leading and footer trailing, right? So beginning and end. That's kind of hopefully a little bit explanatory there. I've got a couple more buttons, a uh, previous button and a next button. Colors will be neutral. Uh, icon is gonna be using the Chevron left and Chevron right. Now, there are no, unfortunately, I was look, trying to look at the icons for arrows that more closely resemble these like, kind of sideways triangles we have here, but we don't really have uh, that in here. I could use one of these, like arrow bold left, arrow bold right, uh, or regular arrows and stuff. I was hoping to get those little triangles, but the closest ones I can get to are the chevrons here. So if I just search for chevron, uh, I see I have a couple of different options over here that I can use. So I thought that was going to work just fine. Uh, these are kind of bold. They stick out a bit. Uh, kind of what I want to do. And this is, a, I should point out too, that you know the icon page on the Calcite side has the ability for you to go and filter these icons. You can look at different categories and stuff, and you'll probably find the icon you're interested in inside the Calcite icon library. Okay, so back to our app. So I got the basic skeleton of the application set up. Uh, and I have some CSS here, just kind of modifying some things a bit. So that little count, I've got, oops, let me, got some margins around that count that's going to be right here. Uh, my container for it is going to be 400 pixels wide. That's this container. Uh, it's going to let me have an overflow just in case, but I don't really need it in this particular case. And that's about it. Now for the JavaScript, right? So, oh, let me go back to the HTML page. So for this case here, just like if I were to follow the, uh, if I go overview at tutorials here, 
if I follow the tutorial for creating a map, it's going to tell me what I need to put into the uh, page to get the calcite stuff working and everything, right? So uh, you want to be able to add uh, this stuff here. So you want the CSS for calcite. You want the, uh, the JavaScript to get loaded for the calcite stuff and everything too. So that's what I'm doing over here. I am loading the uh, regular JSAP, JSAPI calcite. Oh, I'm sorry, regular JSAPI CSS to calcite CSS. I'm loading the calcite a library in here to kick everything off. Okay, so now let's get down to some JavaScript. So I've already got the DOM elements ready here to go to do something. And I want to, when the view is ready, I want to start actually doing some work. So what do I want to do here? So let me just get some uh, variable set up first. So when I start the application, I'm going to have an index of zero. It's going to be equal to zero. That's going to be the very first feature that I get. Uh, total count, let's just say it's going to be equal to one, right? Let's say I have one result. Uh, I want the layer view because what I want to do to make this faster is I want to be able to query the features uh, as soon as the map loads, get all the features within the extent. I could do this as the extent changes. However, uh, it's just going to be a, a state management kind of, uh, nightmare in this particular case. I would do it in a larger app maybe, but for what I want to show here, we're going to keep things simple and only do it once. Grab the features one time and that's it. So I'm going to get a layer view and that's going to be equal to await view when layer view and we'll pass it the, the layer that we made. Okay, great. So I got my layer view. I'm going to wait for when false once on the view and the updating property. So this is when the, the view is done. Um, everything's going to get loaded into the, the page and it should be ready to go. At this point, I could start querying the features. So it's going to create our query. So const query is going to be equal to create query. Now I want the uh, geometry for the query to be the view extent. So query dot geometry is going to be equal to view dot extent. Awesome. Now at this point, I can go ahead and query the layer. So I'm going to say const. Now I know I get a feature set back, so I'm going to get the features out. Uh, get that in a second. So it's going to be the layer view. So I want to await, oops, layer view dot query features and pass it to query. Then I know the result I get back is a feature set, so I'll just go ahead and pull the features out of there. Okay, so now I can start doing a little bit of work here. So you can see here I've created my uh, feature widget and the feature target is going to be up in here somewhere. Now there's no graphic assigned to that feature widget yet. So that's why it's empty here. So I can assign that to the feature dot graphic um, is going to be equal to oops features zero like so, and now we're going to go ahead and populate the feature widget on the sidebar over here. Typos everywhere. I am sorry. That does it. Okay, so now we have our feature widget populated over here. All right, next is to get these buttons hooked up and start uh, doing stuff, right? So let's go ahead and say that the total count is going to be equal to the uh, features dot length. Awesome. All right, so now what I want to do is I need a small function in here. It's going to do some work for me. So I'm going to call this function update. Oops, update. It's going to be a, a fairly simple function. So I need to do a few things here. I'm basically going to manage the index of the uh, previous next feature, right? So if the current index is less than zero, uh, then the current index is going to be equal to uh, 
features dot length minus one. Else if the um, current index is equal, let's do a triple equal here, features dot length. Then that means I'm at the end of the array and I want to start over. So we'll say that current index is going to be equal to zero at that point. Okay, perfect, perfect. So now what I can do is I can reassign the next or previous feature to the feature widget. So we're going to say feature dot graphic is going to be equal to features and oops. Let's grab the current index like so. Okay, perfect. Now well, maybe we'll get rid of some of this too here. So maybe I'll get rid of that in a second, not just yet. Okay, so now what I want to do is that the small info button I have here, I want to populate that. So that info, well, it's not a button, it's just some text I'm going to have in there. That um, inner text is going to be equal to, well, temper the drawing here. We're going to say current index plus one. Remember, because if it's the uh, zero, I'm really looking at the first one in the array of, and then the total count, which is going to be the um, no, features out length. Well, I guess I could just put features out length in here. That's features dot length. I guess I don't really need total count. Okay. Not a problem, not a problem at all. All right, so now let's do this. Now let's say, uh, let's call that update in here real quick. All right, perfect. One of 165. If I get rid of that, I should still be fine. Current index is still gonna be zero, right? So if I go, I want to have the, the buttons hooked up to all this stuff. All right, all right, perfect. So I've got that update function there. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up the buttons now. So I'm gonna say button uh, previous and event listener. Yeah, let's click. All right, let's copy this. And we'll just say button next. Since they're gonna be pretty close to the same thing. So for this one, we're going to say that uh, current index is going to be equal to current index, uh, what is this, minus one. I'm looking at the previous one. Yes, I can do minus minus, but you know what? I like to be very explicit sometimes in how I'm writing my code. So I'm not going to mess with that minus minus plus plus stuff. All right, so this one next will be plus one. And then both of these, once they do that, are going to call the update method. Perfect. All right. Let's see what this ends up looking like now. Bam, there we go. Second one, third one, fourth one. If I go back, okay, now I'm at the end of the array. If I go up, bam, it goes to the first one in the array. That's awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's add a bit of highlight to this, right? So. I'm going to add a highlight variable up here. That's going to be null to start. Now, in my update function, let's do this here. Let's start highlighting things. So I'm going to say, if I have the highlight that exists, let's go ahead and remove it. Oops, don't need that. Okay, there we go. So if the highlight is not null, we're going to go ahead and call the remove method on there. So it's going to clear any highlights that might be on the layer view. And we're going to say that the highlight is going to be equal to layer view. If I can spell layer view right. Dot. Oh my gosh, I can't type. Highlight. And we're going to highlight the current graphic of the feature widget. Like so. So I call the update method as soon as it starts. So it should update. There we go. Update that feature up there. So if I go to the next one and so on, that's like a little sliver. You kind of make it out over there and so on and so forth. Oh, now that's cool. I really dig that. 
Uh, so, okay, so we need a, a zoom uh, method here. So let's do this. So let's do what I call it. I think I call it button zoom because of course I did. Button zoom. Zoom dot add. Event listener. Okay, so hopefully this is going to be fairly easy. We say view, go to, and the target is going to be the current graphic of the feature widget. All right, so we're going to highlight some stuff on the map. Let's do this one over here and do a zoom. Bam, there it goes. Let's go over here, zoom here zoom there we go look at that all right so it's not too bad like i said this doesn't take into account if i am uh, zooming out and changing my extent and everything or um, this would be much more useful for a smaller data set and you just kind of want to iterate all the features because you don't want to have people iterating through you know even 100 features kind of a lot maybe like 50 or so would be fine but you definitely don't want people iterating through a few hundred to a thousand features in your application like this. This isn't a good user experience, right? But this is definitely something usable for maybe a set of results. You've done a query to find um, all the, uh, what are the census tracts that have certain demographics or something. So you can put those results into something like this and then start iterating through the results in a sidebar like this. That way you keep the map clear. No pop-up over here or anything like that. So this is just one way um, that you can do uh, this work here. But I think it's kind of a nice way to show how you can take advantage of using the uh, CalSec components and a little bit of JavaScript. You know this uh, vanilla JavaScript, right? No framework up in here uh, to kind of wire it up to the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. All right, so that was just a quick walkthrough of how you could take advantage of the CalSec components that you have available to you if you're using the ArcGIS API for JavaScript and to create little wrappers and small uh, components you can use in your applications. Like I said, there's really a lot more you could do. Uh, if you walk through the um, uh, tutorial on here on creating a mapping app, it'll show you a lot more you can do for like uh, buttons that will have con open containers, that will hold widgets and stuff. It's really neat, really uh, useful. But I just kind of want to show this is one use case that I just thought was kind of neat that you could do. So go ahead and give it a shot. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks.